All right, uh, let's get started. Let me go through a few quick announcements, and then I want to discuss some stuff in regards to the homework. I, I think that uh, for the most part, the, uh, if I had to guess, the homework went all right, except for I think some of you had questions about number five. Am I right? Is that the one that caused some issues? Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm going to, the homework's due today, but the lecture that we do is probably going to be somewhat quick, and then we'll have a fair amount of time to uh, uh, discuss this um, a after the lecture, and I, I can help you work through some of this. But I'll, I'll give you all to the end of the class today to go through it. The problems really shouldn't take very long. They're not they're not time crunchers. I mean, once you kind of get it, you can knock those problems out in, in a few minutes. That they're they're not. Uh, uh, they're not going to cause too much issues with that. Sound good? All right. So let me go through a few quick announcements. Uh, again, the, the technical conference. Um, the technical conference is uh, next Thursday. So make sure that uh, if you're interested in volunteering, to contact Logan Stacks as soon as you can. I think they've got a fair amount of volunteers, but uh, obviously the, the more the better. Um, there's a scholarship I mentioned where the deadline is the 20th of January. I'm not sure if, if uh, our uh, administrative assistant got the email out, but I know that they sent it out. It was like back in, in November, so it's probably in your inbox uh, somewhere, but the deadline for that uh, is tomorrow. Now, the homework one uh, assignment is due today. Uh, we are going to give you homework two. Oh, I've got a typo. It's not due today. Sorry. That's not due for a while. Oh. There you go. That's better, right? We can have homework too due today as well if you want, right? Now we're waking up. Now we're getting getting uh, getting relaxed. Okay. Um, homework two is going to be on the operations for the Casio, and I've decided to make things a little easier. For instance, um, uh, if you look at the assignment, the, the way the assignment is structured, it's meant for you to go through the various operations on how to use this, on how to use your calculator. So if you look at the assignment, a lot of it is sort of like filling instead of having to do a, a formatted assignment, you know, something like this. I'll just give you all that, and you all can just turn this in back in back into me just to make it a little easier. Sound good? Everybody okay with this? Okay, I'll, I'll hand this out here later on. I'll also go ahead and get the sign-in sheet started. Um, a couple notes. So I'm not going to be here on Tuesday, the 24th. Um, as of now, uh, Dr. Waite, uh, who's teaching another section of Engineering 111, is going to come in and cover for me that day. But pay attention to your emails. As far as I know, that's the plan uh, as of right now. But just pay attention to your emails uh, in case anything changes. Regardless, we're not going to have class on next Thursday because that's the day of the conference. So um, at the very least, um, if you've got time, you might want to come check it out. It's in the basement of the Student Center. And uh, again, you might learn something, and you might uh, uh, have some opportunities for some networking. All right, sound good? OK, let me, uh, before we get into the lecture, which we're going to start breaking uh, out the Casio and using that, so I hope you've got yours with you today, um, if, you, uh, if you've gotten yours. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you're try, uh, getting this as soon as you can. Um, I do want to go through this problem on the homework assignment, because um, th I think there were some uh, concerns and some confusion about it. And I'm going to take, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of these and go through it with you. And then um, uh, hopefully going through one of them, I think you'll see how you can kind of go through the rest of them. Sound good? So let's see. Let's just do the last one. Let's just do the fourth one. OK. So um, what do I got? Let me pull this up. OK. So I had, I think it was, um, so it was like four. Ooh, that is. That is way too big. Oh, hold on for a second. Let me do this. Um, give me a moment. Let me change my pen settings up a little bit. All right, part four. That's a little better. Okay, so the, the problem was something like what? It was like F, and then it was what? T2 minus T1, and then that equals M times 
what was it like V2 minus or MV2 minus MV1, something like that? Okay. Now, as long as you're following like basic rules of algebra, I don't know that there's any one correct way to go about this. As long as when it's all said and done, you get two uh, terms on either side of the equal sign uh, that in fact equal one another. In other words, if I plug in a bunch of values uh, and on the left side I'm supposed to get something like, let's say, feet, I better get feet over here. If I got feet, let's say, times seconds, then that wouldn't be dimensionally equivalent. Okay? Make sense? If, if I say that two values are going to be equal to one another, by and large they need to have consistent units. So that's really what we're trying to, uh, to assess. So what I'm going to do to, to go through this is I'm going to, you know, sort of take each side of the equal sign one by one and just start plugging in the appropriate units and seeing what I get. So uh, let's, I think the easier side might be to work on the right. So let's work on the right a little bit. Okay, so first off, if you look at this, I've got a mass times velocity minus a mass times a velocity. So let's start off with the mass. What are the uh, units for mass that we're using for this series of equations? Kilograms. So I've got kilograms times a velocity, and that velocity is in meters per second, right? Sound good? Okay. And then minus kilograms times meters per second. Same thing over here. So far so good? Okay, now let me pull something up on the lecture notes real quick uh, before I start getting too deep into this because I wanted to because I wanted to make sure this kind of made sense going back to some of the stuff we did earlier. Okay, we had looked at a problem in the uh, lecture notes that looked something like this. We were talking about when you start plugging uh, values uh, in a particular equation that the units have to be consistent. Not only do the, the, uh, does the answer need to make sense, for instance, if we were talking about deflection, when you start plugging in all the values, if it's a deflection, you better get something like inches. But um, when you start adding units up, they've got to make sense as well. For instance, uh, going back to the uh, total energy in a, a, a pipe, you know, a fluid conduit, you know, I've got all these different energy terms that are being added, but when you start breaking it down, each term is going to result in a, a, a value that's in meters. So, you know, so many meters plus so many meters, et cetera. So, think about it like this. If I have, let's keep it simple. If I have two meters plus three meters, what's the answer? Five what? Meters, meters okay. So, that's one, of, uh, you know, that's one of the things I'm after, is that if I take a quantity and I add something to it, as long as they're the same units, I'll get the same units in return. So, two meters plus three meters equals five meters, or, you know, seven meters minus three meters is four meters, right? Sound good? Okay, so what I'm getting at is over here on the right side of the equal marks, if I've got kilogram meters per second minus kilogram meters per second, whatever those quantities are that go along with that, the answer is going to be in kilograms times meters per second. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Okay, now let's work on the, um, the left side a little bit. Okay, so that's everything going on on the right side. So we've got uh, MV2 minus MV1 substituted, and I think we broke that down into its simplest components, the kilograms, meters, seconds, what have you. Okay, now on the right side, we've got a force, and what are the units for force? Newtons. Okay, and then that's being multiplied by a time, and what are we using for time? Seconds. So we have seconds minus seconds. So ultimately, on the left side, it's going to be newtons times seconds, right? Now, right off the bat, this doesn't look like it's dimensionally equivalent. It doesn't look right. You know, we got newtons and kilograms. That doesn't really make sense. The key is to recognize the following quantity. So, one newton equals one kilogram times meters per second squared. And that's by and large probably uh, one of the most important conversions we'll use in this. So one newton equals one kilogram times one meters per second squared. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that. So instead of writing a Newton right here, I'm going to write a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So I'll go ahead and put my little squiggly on that. Okay, so if you notice, I'm just replacing that Newton with a kilogram uh, meters per second squared because they're the same thing. Okay, so then times seconds equals kilogram times meters per second. Does everybody see what I did there? Now, now we can start doing some cancellation. If I've got seconds squared on the bottom and then I'm multiplying that by seconds, one of those seconds is going to get canceled, right? Everybody okay with that? So over here on the left side, what I've ultimately got is kilograms times meter per second equals what I had over here on the right, kilograms times meter per second. So let me ask you, is this equation dimensionally equivalent? Yes, this is dimensionally equivalent. Okay. This, okay. The other ones are exactly the same. You just keep going through it and you're going to get one of two answers. You're going to get something you know, like kilograms times meters equals kilograms times meters, or you're going to get something like, I don't know, kilograms equals kilograms divided by seconds. It's like, well, no, it's not. They're not dimensionally equivalent. Does that make sense? And that's, that's the long and short of it. Yes, sir? Oh, you, you're saying like if I took um, like both sides and I said, okay, let's divide this by kilograms and divide that by kilograms? You could do that, yeah. You could do that. Um, yeah, that would work. You're, so like if basically you're taking like this, and you could say if I divided by seconds, on the left side I would just have newtons, and then on the right side I'd have kilograms times meters per second squared, and that would be newtons. That's fine as well. Um, what Again, as long as you're not violating those multiplicative rules of algebra, you know, you know, carrying exponents and canceling over and things like that, there's no real wrong way to go about it. Does that, does that help answer your question? Is everybody else okay with that? All right. So, you know, our lecture shouldn't take too long today, um, hopefully, and um, uh, you should have a fair amount of time. I mean, that's this one, and I think the others really don't take a, uh, that, that much time. So, does that sound good? Everybody good? All right, then let's, let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the lecture for today. Um, before I do that, let me, um, let me see. Let me actually pull this up. So we're going to be talking about the Casio uh, emulator, or the Casio uh, FX115 calculator. We'll do a little bit of discussion as to why we're using that in here, but I'm going to make a fair amount of use of this emulator software. So to give you kind of an idea, you know, if I start entering in values, you can kind of see it, you know, on the screen. So hopefully you all should be able to follow along with me. One other thing I'm going to pull up is what's called this key log. So you'll kind of see what happens, like as I hit a button on the calculator, like if I hit the AC button, see how it pops up up here? And then I can do one, two, three, and see how it's starting to enter in up here as, as sort of a log. So you, hopefully you all should be able to follow along with me as I'm entering in these, uh, these quantities. All right, sound good? Okay, so let's get a, uh, at least a little bit into the discussion regarding the, uh, the Casio. Um, and, I, and I might be hopping back and forth from the, the slides and the, uh, and the calculator, so bear with me, but you all should be able to access the, uh, the slides on uh, Blackboard. So <coughs> the calculator that we're using in this class, uh, if you haven't already figured out, <laughs> is the, uh, the Casio FX115, the ES Plus edition, I guess I should say. Um, dollar for dollar, I'd say that this calculator is one of the more powerful ones uh, on the market. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could go find a $150 TI-89 or some, something like that. Uh, could do a, a lot more stuff. But for the price and for what this is able to do, it's really a very uh, valuable investment. I think what ends up happening is that because of the calculations you do, not just in this class, but uh, throughout, this calculator tends to become the uh, the, the best friend of a, a, a lot of engineering students here at Marshall um, because it, it can do quite a bit. Um, now that, that's one of the reasons why we show you this calculator in this class. You know, it can do 
complex math. It can do matrix math. It can solve uh, equations. It's got pretty uh, visible and easy to understand uh, display um, and, and a whole bunch of conversions and, and fraction functions and things like that. But one of the really big reasons why this calculator is so valuable is because it is permitted to be used on the FE and the PE exams. For those of you who um, remember from Engineering 103, I think that was a big theme of that class was, you know, go take your, your uh, licensing exams, go get your engineering stamp. And uh, in order to do that, you have to take a, uh, a series of two standardized tests, the FE exam and the PE exam. Uh, you'll take your FE exam around your senior year uh, in college, and you'll take your PE exam a few years later in your career. And they're nationally standardized tests. And there's a very stringent list of calculators that you're allowed to use, and this is one of them. So that's one of the reasons why we, we focus on it uh, in the curriculum. So it's a, it's a, a, a really powerful tool that, that uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get familiar with uh, over the next few days. Um, before we begin, um, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, I want to go through uh, with everybody and clear all of the, uh, the functions associated with the, uh, you know, all the modes and, and, and data with the calculator. That way we're sort of all on the same page. So you've got here the instructions on your screen. I want to sort of bring this up uh, with the emulator. We're basically going to reset the calculator to its factory settings. So I've got the calculator. Let me clear this. And then I'll go ahead and clear my, my key log for now. Okay. So I've got, the, I've got the calculator. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift and 9. So just to give you a little bit of uh, understanding as to the way it works, you notice the Shift, um, it kind of has sort of a, a, like a brownish gold color to it. I don't know if you all can see that. But if you notice, uh, alongside every button, it, you tend to find usually maybe like a, a, a gold command above it. So for instance, above the number four where it says matrix, does everybody see that? If you wanted to access the matrix fun functions of the calculator, you would hit shift and then four, okay? If you wanted to access um, uh, unit conversions, you would do shift and eight for conversion. What we're gonna do is shift and nine for the clear menu. So if I hit shift, and 9, it should bring up a menu that looks something like this. Now we have the option to clear either the setup, the memory, you know, any of the stored variable or you know, stored uh, numbers and whatnot, or to clear everything. So I'm going to clear everything by hitting 3. Then it's asking, are you sure you want to do this? We'll hit equals for yes. And then now everything's been reset and we press the AC key to, uh, to get back. And you, you'll know what you've done is right. Because if you look at the top, you should see two things on top of the display. You should see a letter D, and you should see the word math. The letter D stands for the fact that the calculator is in degree mode. You can have degrees and radians. And math will tell us uh, the, which mode uh, the, the values are being displayed in. Okay, so is everybody with me on that? Everybody following that? Okay. All right. So um, what I'm going to go through is a few basic um, examples regarding some calculations and a few basic modes that the, um, the calculator will operate under. So um, let me see. So if you want to start investigating some of the various options and, and, and setups with the calculator, probably the best place to go is either the mode menu or the setup menu. I'm going to start off with the setup menu first. So let me go ahead and clear that. So if I want to find the setup menu, uh, you see I've got mode here, but then right next to it I've got setup. I'm going to do shift and then mode to bring up setup. Notice when you hit the shift button, you get a little S that pops up onto the screen to indicate you've got the shift button uh, pressed. So shift and setup. Now this setup menu will by and large um, uh, help you uh, determine the way and the means that the calculator is performing uh, its computations. For instance, are we in degree mode or are we in radian mode? Uh, are we expressing our numbers in scientific notation or are we fixing them to a certain decimal point? Um, <coughs> uh, two of the, uh, I guess, very fundamental uh, display modes are either math I.O. or line I.O. And to give you kind of an idea of what's going on between the two, 
If I go ahead and do the, uh, the math IO or the math O by just selecting math one and one, what this will do is, is when we perform a computation, the computation will show up literally the way that we would write it on a piece of paper. So, for instance, if I go, let me go back to the PowerPoint. Let's say I'm trying to do the following computation, four-fifths plus two-thirds. Now, there's a few ways I could go about this. I could, um, I could go, you know, I could go to the calculator. Let me clear this. One way I could go about it is to just use the, uh, the basic commands for multiplication and division and whatnot. I could do 4 divided by 5 you know, plus 2 divided by 3 and hit equals. And that, and that would work. Um, I think th that's not really taking advantage of some of the more graphical approaches that are associated with the calculator. Um, let me go ahead and clear this. Uh, another way that I can um, that I can go about this computation is to use one of the most powerful buttons on the calculator, which is this one right here. If you look right under the, the CALC button, see that? You'll see what looks like a fraction, like it's got a solid square on the top and then sort of an open square on the bottom. And it'll you'll see that you've got a fraction sort of template pop up. You can actually go in and start inputting those values. So I can enter in a 4. And then I can use this big directional pad here in the middle of the screen. I can go down and I can say, all right, let's enter in 5, go to the right to get out of the fraction, plus, and then do another one, 2 down thirds. Make sense? Is everybody following along with that? So I can hit equals, and then there you go. One of the other things that's kind of nifty about the calculator that kind of I didn't really emphasize, but I should now, Look at the answer it's spitting out to you. It's not spitting out what 1.6 something or what have you. It's actually doing all of the fraction conversions, you know, least common denominator and adding it up and doing all of that stuff for you. So that's, that's pretty nice when you're trying to take a bunch of terms and combine them into a nice, neat fraction that works out uh, pretty nifty. Um, now that's that's the, uh, the sort of the math format, the um, you know, having the calculator display the answer the way that you would write it on a sheet of paper. If I, if I clear all that out, and let me clear my key log. If I go to Shift, Setup, and then do that line I/O format, when I use that fraction button, if I do 4 and hit the fraction button, I get this sort of backwards L thing show up. Everybody kind of see that? Um, there's positives and negatives to, to using this mode. It's really just what you want to use. Um, the, the positive is, is that if you notice when I was using the math mode, I, like when I you know, popped up the, the fraction template, there it was, but I kept having to use the arrows a bunch to you know, go to the bottom and then go out of the fraction and then do all that. Ultimately, this is fewer keystrokes. The downside is, is that it doesn't look as I'll say it doesn't look as pretty as the, the previous mode where you can actually see the way it looks uh, uh, like it would on a sheet of paper. But it, it'll work. I mean, if I hit equals, I get 23 over 15, so it'll still, uh, it'll still work. Sound good? Everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. Let me go back to math mode. So shift, setup, and math O. Let me go back to that. Let me clear out my... my uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what. Let me go ahead and do the, the calculation one more time because I want to show you something. So 4 down 5 plus 2 down 3. Enter. Okay. All right. Let me clear my little, let me clear that out. Okay. So everybody with me so far? Okay. Now, that fraction tool is one of the most valuable tools, I would say, that use throughout the, uh, the usage of the calculator. Another very valuable button is this one right above the, uh, the delete key. See where it has sort of S and D? Does everybody kind of see that? Okay, this S and D uh, function is really nifty because it will convert your answer very quickly from a fractional format to a decimal format. So for instance, 22 over 15. If I compute, if I actually do the division, 22 over 15, it's about 1.4 something. Well, I can press S over D and bam, that, now it's telling me what it is. Now, 
Here's one thing. Notice how the calculator is displaying the value. It's saying 1.46 with a bar over. Anybody know what that bar over it means? It means it's repeating. So it's 1.46, etc. I can press that again, and it'll actually go through and, and display it out. Okay. So does that sound good? All right. So that that should be a, a pretty nifty little tool, and and. And I argue that's probably the one button that I think engineering students hit the most on this whole calculator is you know, they get a, a value or they get a fraction, but they need a, you know, a, a decimal for rounding purposes uh, and things like that. Okay. Is that part so good? Okay. All right. Now, next one, I'm not, I'm not really going to mess with a whole lot, but if I go back to that, um, let me clear that out. If I go back to shift and then mode to bring up the setup menu, I can, uh, <coughs> I can change the calculator's mode uh, to either degrees or radians. That fifth one is gradient mode. Um, I, don't, I don't think anybody really uses that very much nowadays. We're really focusing on either degrees or radians. Um, I'd argue that when you're doing you know, trig, like I'm, I'm assuming some, most of you all ha have at least been exposed to some basic trig, you know, like sines and cosines and things like that at some point. Just make sure that you're cognizant of what mode your calculator's in. You know, for instance, if I want the sine of 30 degrees, I need to make sure that the calculator is in degree mode, you know, stuff like that. So I, I'm not really going to mess with that right now, but I did want to sort of just give you kind of a, a, a general idea of that. I mean, I can go ahead and, you know, change it to radian mode, for instance, and you'll notice here that on the pop-up display, that D is gone, and now it's an R to indicate that it's in radian mode degree mode. <coughs> All right. Sound good? All right. Okay. Now, okay. Um, one of the uh, nice, other nice uh, aspects of the calculator is that it can, sometimes, it, if you want, it, you can have it do uh, a fair amount of rounding or conversion to a scientific notation uh, if you'd like. For instance, if I go through and I do 4.52 divided by pi. I mean, you all should know by now that pi is a highly irrational number. It just goes on forever. <coughs> so if I do 4.52 divided by, and then to, uh, uh, to locate pi, it's right above this button right here, which this is a pretty nifty button because it'll automatically uh, convert things back to, uh, to scientific notation. I can go to shift, and then that button recalls pi. If I hit equals, it spits out, you know, 1.4387. Um, what I can do is I can force the calculator to only um, report either in scientific notation or um, uh, with a, a fixed number of decimal points. And I can do that through either using the fixed command or the uh, scientific command within setup. So, so watch this. Um, let's, let me clear this. Okay, let me clear my key log. So let, let's explore the fix command. All right, so we're going to go to shift, and we're going to go to setup, and we'll use number six, fix. Okay, so I hit six, and you should have something that pops up, something like this. So somebody spit out a number between zero and nine. I, I don't care what it is. Five. I heard five. Okay, so we're going to fix to five decimal places. Okay, now, let's do that calculation again. 4.52, oh, and if you mess up, that's where the delete command comes into play. The delete will just, it's like backspace on your keyboard. Divided by, shift, and then that uh, scientific notation button to locate pi. Hit equals, and then look what it did. It displayed that number to five decimal places. Okay, everybody see that? All right, so far so good? Okay, now that's, um, that's the uh, fix command, and you notice here on the, on the uh, screen right here that big fix should pop up to indicate that it's not just floating out the decimal points, that it's actually, we're in fix mode. Um, let me clear that out by hitting AC. I can go to, clear my key log. If I wanted to use scientific notation, I could go to shift and then setup. And then instead of um, fix, I can hit number seven for scientific notation. And then it's the same story. So somebody else, how many decimal places? 
I heard three or four. So, okay, another somebody else said four. Four. Some whoever said three got voted out. So, <laughs> all right. So now you'll notice on the screen we've got scientific popped up. Now, let's do that calculation again. Four point five two divided by shift pi equals. And then look what it's doing. Or did I do four? Or did I do three? I think I did. I might have did three or something. I don't know. Maybe it rounded up. I think that might have been what it was. Hold on. Shift. Oh, I oh, oh, see why. It's doing scientific notation. It's only reporting to uh, four significant digits. Sorry. Whoops. Let's try that again. So shift setup. Oh, no. Shift setup. Whoop. Shift setup scientific notation. If we did five, now it's only reporting five significant digits. So there we go. All right. Sound good? Okay. All right. Um, let me go down right here. So this is listing um, uh, some various results using either fixed notation or scientific notation. So yeah, if you're using scientific notation to three places, it's reporting three decimal places. So you all can play around with this. You know, if you uh, put it in scientific notation for three places and do some of these calculations, it'll report the uh, the appropriate values. So I'll leave you all to sort of uh, to mess with that. Um, one thing I will point out, um, we're not going to use or explore every single computation with the calculator, but um, we'll go through some of the basics and through some of the more advanced stuff. Dependent upon time, I, I've, I've toyed around with the idea of going on to the YouTube playlist and actually posting some little like snippet videos. Like, how many folks are in calculus? Or, all right, so um, I'm sure you hit your limit with that stuff. Um, uh, that that was a good joke. If you're just in calculus now, you'll you'll get it later. Again, I, I, I've got loads of, of very corny jokes, so you'll have to deal with it. Uh, if you look at the cal, you'll, if you if you've got experience with calculus, you'll notice some commands that might be familiar. For instance, right under the alpha button, you see this. Um, you see the little squiggle thing. Well, if you if you haven't had calculus, it looks like a little squiggle thing. If you have had calculus, you know that this is a definite integral, right? So this calculator will numerically integrate functions. You know. If you've got limits from A to B, it'll do that for you. It'll also numerically differentiate. Um, you can store uh, certain numbers and recall them later um, and, and other things here and there. So I might post some snippet videos on how to do stuff like that, stuff that you don't really necessarily need to cover in class um, because what I want to do is in a, a short amount of time as possible cover the broad strokes of, uh, of how to use the calculator. But depending on time, I might, I might post some of that stuff. Sound good? Okay. Now, a couple things I will point up, uh, point out. Um, I hope that uh, when you bought your calculator, you actually kept this. This is the, uh, the the cover. Okay. If you look inside the cover, like everybody, pull out the cover. You look inside it. You'll find some some somewhat useful information. Now, um, if you're not a, a uh, a, a physics major, some of these constants may not be somewhat familiar, but if you look, there's a bunch of scientific constants and a bunch of unit conversions. The scientific constants, some of them are pretty, are pretty useful. So, for instance, um, uh, for some of you uh, chemistry folks out there, um, if I want to pull up constants, what I can do is I can pull up shift and 7, let's say, and you'll see that'll bring up the constant menu, so shift and uh, 7, okay? For instance, if you look, see what number 24, everybody see number 24? See where it says N sub A? Everybody see that? So if I do 24, you should have something pop up like this. That number seems somewhat familiar? That's Avogadro's number. Uh, I don't know if I have too many jokes, about, you know, chemistry jokes, but if I do, I'll, I'll try and see if I can get a good reaction out of you. I, I'll come up with something. I, I will. All right. Sound good? 
Now, what, what engineers, I think, are going to use, uh, what's going to be more useful to them, for instance, is gravity. So, for instance, if I do shift constant, and, and instead of entering uh, uh, Avogadro's number for 24, I might do gravity. So, everybody see what number gravity is? Everybody see that? 35, yeah. So, if I do 35, and then hit enter, look somewhat familiar? Should be all right with that. Now that now notice that this gravity. Okay, that's 9.8. What are the units for that? Meters per second squared. Okay, that's so. This is an SI constant. Meters per second squared. If I wanted to convert that to, let's say, feet per second squared, ultimately what I need to do is I need to convert the meters component into feet. Okay. Well, if you look here below that, there'll be a bunch of unit conversions, and there's 40 of those as well. Now, some of them are going to be more useful than others, I think, to, for instance, for civil engineers, you're going to use things like acres. You see, like, number 11, number 12 for square meters to acres. You're going to see things like pounds to kilograms and whatnot. If I wanted to take this acceleration due to gravity and report it as, let's say, uh, feet, what I might do is I might say, all right, let's go to shift, and let's go to 8 for conversions. And then I have to enter in a conversion number. Well, if I wanted to convert meters to feet, I would use number 4. Everybody see that? So if I enter in 0, 4, so you notice you've got to enter in the 0 as well. So 0, 4, it's, ask, it's saying taking that answer and recording it from meters to feet. Press enter. And then in scientific notation, that's about, what, 32.2, which 32. 0.2 feet per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity in U.S. units. All right. Sound good? All right. Remember, always, when in doubt, if you're trying to get the calculator back into its original mode and you're like, I don't remember how to go to these modes, just remember, shift, clear, all equals. And now it's back to its original operating procedures. Okay. So far, so good. All right. Now, one thing that should be uh, uh, really, um, uh, maybe should, should ring a bell if, if you've had um, trig is uh, the conversion between rectangular and polar coordinates. So, so to go back a little bit, um, I think everybody in the room probably has a reasonable, a reasonable amount of experience with rectangular coordinates. You know, if I have a point that's 2 comma 3, it's 2 over on the x-axis, and it's 3 up on the y, right? That's one way to locate a given point. Another way to locate that point is to say I have a radius that's so far out rotated at such an angle, and then that'll get me to that point as well. And, you, and you know, one of the things that you fundamentally learn in trig is to how to convert between the two. So, you know, like, for instance, x, you can find x by taking r times the cosine of theta and y is r times the sine of theta. If you've had trig or pre-calc, you've probably reviewed that stuff in there. Am I right? Okay. One of the nice things about the, uh, the, the, the calculator is it will do uh, polar and rectangular conversions automatically for you. And, and the results, I think, are, are, are pretty nice. So, for instance, and I'll just make up some values. Let's say I have a point that's 3 over on the x-axis and 4 up on the y. So, you know, let's see. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. And I have a point that's right here. And we'll say that that is 3 and that is 4, right? So it's x and y coordinates are 3 comma 4. Everybody see that? So... 3 comma 4. And what I want to know is what is R and what is that angle. So R would be, you know, how far, like what is this length right here? And theta would be how much that angle is right there. All right. Sound good? Now, anybody who's got any experience with trig, I'm just curious. Anybody know what R is? 5. Yeah, because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So let's see if that works. So we're going to take this, and we ultimately want polar coordinates. So if I go to shift, and I go to plus, see where it has P-O-L? Everybody see that? That'll indicate my answer should be in polar coordinates. And I'm going to do 
three comma four. So three, now to enter in a comma, look right here above this right parentheses and see that little comma right there? Anybody see that? So shift comma four and then close it up with a parentheses. And if you notice right here on the key log, you can literally just follow button for button what it is that I'm entering. Okay. Now when you hit enter, what we should get is, bless you, is R equals 5 and an angle equals something. So we got R equals 5 and the angle is 53.13 what? Is it 53.13 radians or 53.13 degrees? Degrees, we're in degree mode. All right. Sound good? All right. So if I wanted to work backwards, if I wanted to say, okay, um, let's tell me what the rectangular coordinates are. So shift rectangular coordinates. If I have a radius that's, let's say, 12 and an angle that's 132 degrees, just close that up and hit enter, and there you go. And it gives you the X coordinates, and you can use the arrow key to get the uh, Y coordinates. So, sound good? And again, keep in mind, if you're missing something, that's an, uh, the beauty of YouTube. You can always go back to the recording and go, How, what buttons did he hit? So, hopefully that, uh, that works out. So, let me clear that up. Clear my key log. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. I only have one other thing I want to show you, and then the rest of the time is all yours, and that is degrees, minutes, seconds uh, calculation. Um, I'd argue this is probably more relevant for you civil engineers in the room than everybody else, but uh, for you civils, um, uh, being able to manipulate degrees, minutes, seconds is a very um, critical skill uh, in the world of transportation. For instance, you're going to take a class uh, here soon called geomatics where you learn uh, principles of land surveying and how to measure topography and coordinates and things like that. And by and large, they're going to be in degrees, minutes, seconds. That's, I'd argue one of the very strong benefits of this calculator is that it will um, do degree minute uh, second computations for you very easily. Um, let me pull the calculator up real quick. So um, just curious if everybody knows what I mean by degrees minute seconds. For instance, I'm sure you all heard of latitude and longitude. So a point is, you know, so many uh, degrees we uh, north and so many degrees west. Well, if you look at the map, I mean, you know, think of degrees. I mean, how large is a degree on the map? I mean, how far is it from 38 degrees north to 39 degrees north? It's pretty far, you know. When we're talking about measuring a, 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 a you know, a site for a new office building, we can't be, we can't use just degrees. We have to be more accurate than that. So we can take a degree, bless you, we can take a degree and divide it up into 60 increments, and each one of those increments is a minute, okay. And we then take those minutes and divide those up into 60 increments and we call those increments a second. So it's honestly the same uh, 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 increments that you use for time, you know, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, so on and so forth. The nice thing about the calculator is it'll add this stuff up uh, pretty easily. So for instance, let's look at this example uh, here, 33 degrees, 45 minutes, 25 seconds, plus 13 degrees, 5 minutes, 44 seconds. It's really straightforward. All you have to do is use this key right here. It's the key right next to the negative sign. See where you kind of, it looks like degrees, minutes, seconds. It has the degrees, minutes, seconds symbol on it. All you do is you say, okay, 33 degrees, 45 minutes, 25 seconds. And that's it. Plus 13 degrees, 5 minutes, 44 seconds. There you go. I'll tell you, that, I guarantee you, that calculation will save you an inordinate amount of time next semester when you take geomatics. Um, the same thing works for a, for a um, subtraction. Uh, you can do subtraction as well. You can multiply and divide uh, and etc. Um, one other thing I'll point out. So, 46 degrees, 51 minutes, uh, 9 seconds, um, that's in degrees, minutes, seconds. If I wanted to convert that to decimal degrees, I would hit the, that S uh, to D button as well, and you can see how it's converting into fractions and decimal format. So that many uh, degrees, minutes, seconds is about 46.85 uh, degrees. 
Sound good? Any questions? Uh, I think you end up just having to to go up here whoop, and use the up and down arrow because the up and down arrow, well, this is one thing I didn't really point out, but I guess I should. The nice thing about this calculator is it will store the history of your computation. So if you go up and down, it will go back and say, okay, that was my previous calculation and then go down to the one I just did. And it automatically reports that in degrees, minutes, seconds. And then you can go through and convert. But yeah, just going up and down will sort of refresh the, the computation. If you press left or right, you go back into edit mode for that computation. You could go in and say, well, wasn't supposed to be a five. That was supposed to be an eight. And then there you go. Sound good? And don't worry, we're going to take our, th this is just the basic stuff with the calculator. What we're going to do uh, next time and the time after that is we're going to assess uh, how to do, use the calculator to do some more advanced stuff, like how to solve an equation, because it'll do a lot of fundamental equation solving for you. How to even use the calculator to help graph stuff uh, and whatnot. So that stuff will help out, uh, help you out uh, really well. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that right now. Let me, I may actually pull it up real quick while I'm handing it out and then um, talk about it while it's being distributed. Okay, so, so while the assignment is being handed out, a, a few notes. Again, um, for this one, because it's really fill in the blank, you can just sort of write directly on the assignment. You don't need a separate, um, uh, you know, you, you don't need to do what you did with the, the previous assignment, uh, like you know, separate paper and whatnot. You can just do it on this. Now, for this, just go ahead and do it on here because this is, I, I think of this assignment more as sort of an in-class exercise that we're going to be working on for a while. I mean, you know, I, I guarantee, I know some of you are going to see the assignment as well. This isn't due until February 2nd. I'm just going to put it off to the last minute. But honestly, like right now, you should have the capabilities to do problem one, problem two, problem three, and problem four, and I would just do them, knock them out right now, you know, and then next time you can knock out five and six, and then when the assignments actually do, it's not a lot of work, okay? Sound good? All right. The only thing I'll point out is some of these unit conversions, and I'm going to sort of keep quiet because I want to see what you can come up with, but some of these unit conversions might require more than one conversion. Like, for instance, there is no direct button on the calculator that will go from U.S. gallons to uh, British gallons. So what you're going to have to do is you know, convert from gallons to a unit and then convert to something else. So it's going to require two conversions. Um, the last thing I'll point out for this uh, homework assignment, I'm most concerned with your ability to use the calculator. So I'll be honest, I'm not really that concerned about the whole scientific or uh, uh, significant figures and things like that. So I imagine some of you are going to be doing the computations and you know, you do nine inches to centimeters and it reports, you know, 26 point da 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 da, da centimeters or what, whatever it is. That's fine. So you can just go ahead and write it out. Sound good? All right. Any other questions? All right. Like I said, I won't be here on, uh, uh, on Tuesday. As far, uh, as far as the plan is right now, Dr. Wade will come in and, uh, and teach. But pay attention to your emails in case the plan changes. Sound good? All right. With that, that's all I've got, and I will let you all work on the remainder of your assignments.